Hi guys, welcome back to Astro Addict. So in this video I'd like to give a small tutorial on what auto guiding is and how to use and how to use it. I will try to cover PhD and all the necessary functions. Please note that I'm totally not an expert in this. If you need some more information you can ask questions in the comments or look up other information online. I just try to sum up some information to help you guys to get started in auto guiding and to avoid some troubles that I had with auto guiding earlier. So point number one, what is auto guiding and why do we need it? So if you have a go-to mount like the Skywatch HQ5 for example and you want to take astro images through your telescope you can take short images, 60 seconds or maybe even 2 minutes but if you want to take longer exposures, that's gonna be a problem. Even with a tracking mount like the Skywatch HQ5 for example, even a mount like this is not precise enough to give stable images uh, when you have your camera attached. So these problems can be fixed in a few ways and one of these ways is auto guiding. So point number two. What's the easiest way to auto-guide your telescope? I searched up a lot of information online and the easiest way for me, maybe not the um, cheapest way, but definitely an easy way, is to use the guide scope and the guide camera on the telescope. And for this, I have a small 60mm guide scope. Very practical, it goes on the top of the um, telescope and in the back we have a one and a 1.25 inch you see I'm not no I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, adapter and on this adapter we can we can put a camera this is a very small auto guiding camera it's a CCD camera the Altair GP Cam 2 I chose this one for practical reasons because it goes right in the back of the guide scope and it has two easy parts in the back. So this is the camera. Right here you can see the optical sensor. And there are two parts in the back. We have a USB part which goes from the camera into the laptop. and. We, have, we also have an ST4 port. This goes from the camera directly into the telescope mount. And now the next thing. How does this system work? So, there's a program, a free software for your PC, it's called PHD2 Guiding. It's a software that can help you to other guide. You attach the camera to the guide scope and the guide scope to your telescope. You attach the USB port to your laptop and the SD4 port to the telescope and then you start the software PHD and the camera, once you um, focus the guide scope, you will see stars through the camera obviously. And what the software does, it picks one star and tells the telescope to lock that star in place where it is so the stars aren't moving. So the mistakes that every mount does are eliminated. And what that exactly means, I think um, I'm not going to explain this in the in this theoretic theoretical part. I'd rather get outside and explain how PhD works um, on the field. I'd say I already did that yesterday, so um, we're gonna do a swap back a few minutes hours. The other possible ways to um, get a correct auto guiding. I've heard of off-axis guiding but I haven't touched my hands on, the, um, on that. I thought it was a bit more complicated even though maybe a little cheaper, I don't know. If you want more information you can search anything online. I bet there's enough information around. I think that it's for this part. And now let's jump to yesterday and I'll explain how 
PhD works first person. Okay, outside now, and now the tutorial for outer guiding. The things I already did. I have my guide scope on the back of the telescope, and in the back the guide camera, the Altair GP cam. The GP cam is connected with the white cable to the outer guider port in the mount and the black USB cable is going into the laptop. And the telescope is now pointing at the star Vega. Vega, Vega, I don't know. <laughs> and now on the laptop I already started PhD 2. And the things you have to do first, you have to connect your camera and your mount. So you will see this, you can select your camera you have here. I have the Altair camera. I'll click connect and it worked. And the mount is on camera. So I click this again. Now it's connected. And the options we have now, these two green arrows, so we can start looping the exposure. So the camera is gonna start taking pictures. The exposure time, you can see right here, one second, you can uh, adjust this to your liking. And the star here, I already calibrated my guide scope, is the star Vega, where, which the telescope is looking at. The slider down here is to adjust the screen gamma. And the advanced options sometimes are very confusing, so... Mostly I don't touch them except, except for the, to clear the calibration, which you have to do if you want to uh, look into an another area of the sky and start the next calibration there. So now you want to auto guide with PhD to get your images smoother and more crisp. Okay, so we're looping the exposures. The stars are here. We can turn it up to maybe three three seconds to see more and there it is we can see many more stars now at first we have to select a guide star the star which the software is using to keep the picture in place we could just double click on any star we want for example this or this and even No, not even this one, it's too big. So, the options, the best is the... Where is it? Ah, I'm lost. Auto select star. So it's gonna choose the best star possible. And it shows this one, it's very small. Over here, we can see the SNR, the signal to noise ratio, is on 42. That's quite good, it could be higher, maybe... I could pick this star, and now it's on 76. And once you have selected this star, I'm gonna go on one second again, and do another auto select, so it's gonna choose the best for it. And it chose this one. And now we have to start the calibration. We click the green icon here, and it's gone, gonna start. You see the cross here and the progress is told down here. Now it's moving the telescope left, right, up, down for some parameters and it's gonna check how the telescope in the sky is responding to the movements. And when this is done, this takes about three minutes, we are guiding. Okay, it says guiding now on the bottom left. You see the green crosshair. And now the two graphs you are seeing is the declination in the rectus sensor. Rectus sensor. I don't know how to pronounce that word, sorry. And th these two graphs tell you how precise your auto guiding is. The more smooth they are, the better. You can see it down here, it's sending the guide pulses to the telescope how much pixels it has to move to keep the star in place. 
add some tips instead of PhD to get a smooth graph. You have all these options here of how the graph will develop. You got the aggressiveness on the rectus sensing and on the declination. Then the hysterias. And I don't know what this called, I never touched it. And you can play with these values. It will tell you exactly what each value is. If you look for yourself, you will get. We will try to understand what each thing does and look how the graph responds to it. The error is told down here. I always look at the total error in the in the arc seconds. And in general, I try to go less than one arc second because less than, than one second is ideal for the graph. And if you adjust the sliders and even the exposure time can help if you go more or less. It's just a matter of trying to find what's best for the graph. Okay, we're back here now and just some tips to get the graph in PhD more smooth because that's gonna result in a better image. The experiences I did with PhD. The first tip, Polar align your mount as absolute best as possible. Um, if you don't have the polar alignment correct, the stars are gonna slowly drift off and PhD is gonna have a way harder time to lock the stars in place. And it's gonna make everything in the telescope in your image better if you have the correct polar alignment. Tip number two. Balance your scope correctly with all your gear attached. When I set up my scope, I um, attach the guide scope, I attach the camera, the cables and the DSLR in the back. And I don't even need this equipment before I did the star alignment. I just pivot the scope on all axes to see if it's balanced correctly. Because if it's not balanced correctly, the scope is gonna have a way, uh, the mount is gonna have a way harder time to move the scope around, and it's gonna result in some errors and some periodic error, which is also a thing that a lot of mounts have. So balance your scope correctly with all the gear and cables, cables attached. And what I do after I balance the scope, I take the gear off again leave the balance in place and then attach the, the mirror and the ocular to get the star alignment. Tip number three, and that's more inside of the software than the hardware. In PhD there are a lot of options to get the polar alignment uh, correct and the options below the graph for the declination and the erect ascension. Play with these values and look how the graph develops. For each location, for each, for each hem hemisphere, south or north, there are, I guess there are different options to make the graph more smooth. So play with these values and look how the graph develops to get a smooth image. Okay, I think that's for now. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, leave a question and I do my best to answer them as best as I can. Please again note I'm not a professional, I don't have, I don't have all the answers. And so now I'm gonna pack up all this gear and put it in the garage again because tonight I'm gonna um, take another image of the Sutter region. So stay tuned for that in the next video. Clays guys. <laughs>